Hi, my name is Sarah Hankins, and I have my bachelor's in mechanical engineering from the University of Wyoming, and I'm currently pursuing my master's degree in mechanical engineering, also from the University of Wyoming. I'd like to start things off with a quote, so my quote for today is, Believe You Can, and You're Halfway There by T. Roosevelt. So today we are going to be talking about exact and approximate solutions. So this is the problem that we are going to be looking at. We are given a partial differential equation, which is the negative second partial derivative of u with respect to x equals f of x, and in this case f of x equals x squared, and x goes from 0 to 1. We are also given our initial condition, which is u of 0 equals 0, and our boundary condition, which is the partial derivative of u with respect to x at x equals 1 is equal to 0. So we are going to begin by determining the exact solution. And to do this, we need the equation u of x equals un plus up, where un is the homogeneous solution and up is the particular solution. So the homogeneous solution un takes the form of ax plus b, and the particular solution up equals the double integral of negative x squared dx. And this comes from our partial differential equation over here. So what we're doing is we're moving this negative sign over to the x squared, and we're integrating twice in order to remove this second partial derivative of u with respect to x. And so if we do that, we end up with the particular solution equaling negative x to the fourth over 12. So we're going to go ahead and plug the homogeneous solution and the particular solution back into that first equation. And if we do that, we end up with our new equation, which is u of x equals ax plus b minus x to the fourth over 12. However, you'll notice that we don't know what a is and we don't know what b is, so we have two unknowns, therefore we need to come up with two equations. And these two equations are going to be based off of the initial and boundary conditions that we are given. And you'll notice that over here, our boundary condition is the partial derivative of u with respect to x, so what we are going to do, we're going to do the same thing over here, we're going to take the partial derivative of u with respect to x, and if we do that, we end up with a minus x cubed over three. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. And so we can plug in our initial and boundary conditions into these equations. So we are going to start by plugging in u of zero equal to zero. And if we do that, we plug it into this first equation. And so we get a times zero plus b minus zero to the fourth over 12. So if you solve this equation, b is equal to zero. And then we're going to plug in our boundary condition our partial derivative with respect to x at x equals 1 equals 0 into the second equation. And if we do that, we end up with a minus 1 cubed over 3. And this tells us that a is equal to 1 third. So we then go ahead and plug a and b back into this equation up here. And we end up with our exact solution, which is u equals x cubed over 3 minus x to the fourth over 12. Now we are going to determine the approximate solutions, and in order to do this, we need the weak form of our partial differential equation. And in order to determine the weak form, what we need to do is we need to set our partial differential equation equal to zero. So we are going to subtract x squared over onto the same side as our second partial derivative. And you can see that up here. And then we are going to take the integral and multiply it by the weight function. Our integral goes from 0 to 1, again, because we were told that x goes from 0 to 1. Now what we need to do is we need to integrate by parts this first term here, this w times our negative partial derivative, second partial derivative of u with respect to x. And so this is the equation that we need in order to integrate by parts. And so in our equation, we are going to let u be equal to negative w and dv be equal to d squared u over dx squared. And so if you take the derivative of u, you end up with negative dw over dx. And if you take the integral of dv to get v, you end up with du over dx. And so we are just going to plug everything back into this equation for the integration by parts. And so we end up with the integral from 0 to 1 of negative w partial second partial derivative of u with respect to x, and this was the term that we were trying to solve for, is equal to now negative w partial derivative of u with respect to x plus the integral of partial derivative of u with respect to x partial derivative of w with respect to x dx. And so we are going to plug these two terms back into this top equation because we are solving for this negative w 
second partial derivative of t with respect to x. If you do that, we end up with this equation down here. And so we have our negative w, which goes over here, our second term, which goes over here, and then this third term is still from this first equation, so it's minus the integral from 0 to 1 of w times x squared dx. Now what we're going to do is we are going to expand this first term over here, and we are going to move things around a little bit in the equation, so we are setting the second term equal to the first and the third term, as you can see down here in this next equation. And so if we move the different terms and expand that first term, expanding the first term gives us w of 1 partial derivative u with respect to x at x equals 1, minus w of 0 partial derivative u with respect to x at x equals 0. And we were told in our initial and our boundary conditions that the partial derivative u with respect to x at x equals 1 is 0, so we can cancel this out. And we were also told that u of 0 equals 0, and our u's are equal to our w's, so w of 0 is also going to be equal to 0. So if we cancel everything out, we end up with our final weak form down here in the green box. So now we are going to use that weak form in order to solve a one-parameter approximate solution. And so the form that the one-parameter approximate solution takes is this u1 star of x equals phi naught of x plus c1 phi1 of x. And in our case, the phi naught goes to zero, and this is because of homogeneity. And the reason for that is because our u of zero, so our initial condition equals zero and not an actual number, which tells us that it's homogeneous, and therefore we can set this term equal to zero. So this gives us now the new equation u1 star of x equals c1 phi1 of x. And so what we need to do is we need to use this equation in order to solve for the different components in our weak form equation. So we need to determine what the partial derivative of the with respect to x is, and we also need to determine what the w is in this weak form in order to determine our one parameter solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to let phi1 be equal to x, and so now we end up with this new equation of u1 star of x equals c1 times x. And so you'll notice we don't know what c1 is, so we have one unknown, therefore we need to come up with one equation. And so what we're going to do is we are going to take the partial derivative of u with respect to x, which tells us that this is c1, and we can use this to plug into our weak form for the partial derivative of u with respect to x. The next thing that we need to do is we need to solve for the w's in the weak form. So we are going to let w equal phi1 equal x, and if you take the partial derivative of w with respect to x, you get 1. Again, this is because we need the partial derivative of w with respect to x in the weak form. And so if you plug in all of our knowns back into the weak form, so our du dx is c1, so we plug that in over here. Our dw dx is 1, so we plug that in over here. We integrate it from 0 to 1 because that's what the weak form tells us to do. And then for w, we let w equal x, so we plug in x for w, multiply it by the x squared. And then if you go ahead and integrate that equation and then solve for it, we find out that c1 is equal to 1 fourth. So we plug this c1 back into this equation, and we end up with u1 star of x equals 1 fourth x, and that is our one parameter solution. Now in order to come up with the two parameter solution, it's a very similar uh, set of steps. However, the only thing that's different is our main equation changes. So now we've added on this third term, the c2 phi2 of x. Again, we're still going to let that phi naught be equal to zero. And now for this equation, you'll notice that we have two unknowns. We have c1 and c2. So we need to come up with two equations in order to solve for the two unknowns. And so what we're going to do is we're going to let phi1 be equal to x, phi2 be equal to x squared. If you plug that into this equation, we end up with u2 star of x equals c1x plus c2x squared. Again, we're going to take the partial derivative of this in order to plug into our weak form. So the partial derivative of u with respect to x equals c1 plus 2c2x. And now in order to get our two equations, we our two equations are based on the w's or the weight functions. So we're going to let w be equal to phi1 be equal to x. Now if you take the partial derivative of that w with respect to x, we get that it equals 1. And we are going to plug all of our knowns into the weak form. So 
we are told that du dx is right here equal to c1 plus 2 c2x, so that's why we get this here. And then dw dx equals 1, so this just stays the same. And then we let w equal be equal to x, so we plug in x for w, multiply it by the x squared. And if you solve this integral, you end up with c1 plus c2 equals 1 fourth. Now for our second equation, we are going to let w equal phi2 equal x squared. So now we end up with a partial derivative of w with respect to x equaling to 2x. And so same thing, we're going to plug everything into that weak form. And so this is our du dx. Now we're multiplying it by 2x because that's our dw over dx. And then again, we're letting w be equal to x squared now. So we have x squared times x squared. If you solve the weak form equation with everything plugged in, then we end up with this new equation, which is c1 plus 4 thirds c2 equals 1 fifth. So we have this first equation down here, c1 plus c2 equals 1 fourth. And we have a second equation here, c1 plus 4 thirds c2 equals 1 fifth. So two equations, two unknowns. If you solve these equations, you end up with c1 equals 0 0.4 <coughs> and c2 equals negative 0 0.15. Again, we are going to plug these back into this equation all the way over here. And if we do that, we end up with our two parameter solution, which is u2 star of x equals 0.4x minus 0.15x squared. Now just to kind of get an idea of exactly what these parameter or approximate solutions and exact solutions are doing, I went ahead and graphed them. And so that blue line, blue gray, blue gray line there is the exact solution. The green line is our one parameter solution. So you notice one parameter is a linear line. And our two parameter solution is that yellow line. So you'll notice that as you keep on adding parameters to your approximate solution, it begins to take the shape of the exact solution a little bit more and a little bit more each time. So I hope you learned a little bit about uh, exact and approximate solutions, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.